Wintertime in the Windy City, we look for productive things to do rather than sit on the couch, and one of those things is work on your race car. You may remember our 72 Camaro from previous shows that we've had where we were at the track with it. We ran a 12-11 with this car. We are looking for a way to make it a little faster, and I think the best way is to stick a nitrous system on it. It's a 72 Camaro that's uh, it's been flogged out a little bit at the track that one day. Uh, it's got a 454 oval port motor that fast times it. It's a pump gas engine. Uh, it's a real streetable engine. The, the, uh, the engines like this where you don't spend a lot of money to make them go fast really seem to wake up when you put on a nitrous system. So uh, we couldn't think of a better candidate to stick this system on. Well, the system we chose is a Zex uh, uh, 300 horsepower plate system. The, uh, the things I can tell you about the system is it's unbelievably complete. I mean, from the hardware to mount the bottle and plate and solenoids, brackets, things like the relay, the micro switch that activates the nitrous system, and an on and off switch come with the kit. Jets, a uh, braided line that everything is meticulously capped off, wires, zip ties, I mean really, it's, it's a complete kit. But the thing I like best about it is, is this bolt together plate, uh, it's an amazing piece. I mean, things like the, the perimeter design means that the fuel and the nitrous, instead of it coming out of spray bars, is actually coming out around the outside edge of the plate. It's amazing for distribution. Now, you can install a nitro system basically with the parts that are supplied in the kit, but we chose to, to do a little more. We, we've got uh, things like we wanted to upgrade the fuel system. Uh, also, for mounting the nitrous line safely underneath the car, we bought a package of adult clamps. Adult clamps are nice because they're metal and they wouldn't melt, and they're easy to attach a, a line inside the car. And then Earl supplied us with a bunch of uh, fittings to, to do our fuel system properly. At this point, we're going to mount the regulator off of our carburetor. I find that the uh, cleanest way, the most sanitary way to do it, is to start out with some stainless steel 3 8 tubing. Uh, you, you, what you do is you bend uh, the tubing to fit into your regulator. This is the Holly regulator. Uh, when all is said and done, by the t when you're done screwing it together with your carburetor, it's amazing how strong this is. It actually doesn't require a bracket if you use the stainless steel li uh, lines. Uh, now we're to the point where we're going to mount the uh, fuel solenoid for our nitrous plate. Um, if you take a look, what we're going to do is bend uh, a quarter inch line, that'll be our feed line for our fuel solenoid, and on the outside of it will then be 3 16 line, which is a number three. Uh, so when we're all finished, the fuel solenoid should sit approximately here. We'll feed it and come out and go right into our jet. I'm only going to cut one at a time just to make sure that everything fits when I'm done because uh, no need to make a mistake. It's better to measure twice and cut once. Normally bottle placement is dictated by the amount of line that you have with your nitro system, but luckily with this Zex system, the line is very, very long and we can essentially put the bottle anywhere we want to. And we actually have a pretty good place right back here behind the right front, right rear tire that'll fit very nice. Before you drill any holes, make sure you're not drilling into something like your gas tank. That would have sucked if I drilled right into the gas tank, wouldn't it? I don't even know where that went through. I'm sure it's right in the frame rail. It's got to be. Here's our finished nitrous plate system. Uh, the way it works is... Uh, the nitrous oxide obviously it, uh, comes to the front of the solenoid. When it leaves the solenoid, it comes out and goes into the nitrous plate. The fuel solenoid does the same thing. Now if you notice, our one line for our nitrous is significantly longer than the line for the fuel. I did that on purpose. I found that uh, the nitrous system seemed to have a softer hit. And when I say hit, I mean it, it doesn't explosively apply power to the rear tires. And when you're driving a street car on radial tires, it's a lot nicer to have a graceful application of nitrous oxide. That's why the, the one line is longer. Now when 12 volts gets supplied to the solenoids, what it does is it comes out of the solenoids and then basically comes out of these holes around the perimeter of the plate going into the intake manifold. It's really kind of a cool system. So next up is to put it on. Again, the, the, the reason I like to use the stainless lines is not because it's necessarily better. I actually, uh, it's simpler to use this, the lines that are supplied with the kit. I like the fact that we don't need any bracketry now to hold any of this stuff up. I mean, it's all mounted 
off of the stainless lines and it's strong. And it looks pretty cool to me. Next, Nick ran the nitrous feed line up the firewall and connected it to the nitrous solenoid behind the carburetor. Then, he measured a new line from the new Holley fuel pump to the regulator, cut it to length, and fitted a new hose end. Attaching this line completed the fuel system upgrades. While Nick finished the lines under the hood, Graham mounted the bright purple Zex nitrous bottle to the bracket in the trunk using the supplied hardware. Then he connected the other end of the nitrous feed line to the bottle and tightened the fitting. Nitrous bottles are shipped empty, so this one will have to be filled locally before the Camaro's first nitrous drag strip run. Okay, the next thing we have to do is plug in the wires for the activation switch, like that. And the way this uh, switch works is when the secondaries are fully open, you'll notice it hits the switch and turns the nitrous system on. And that would turn on the system. Pretty cool. Okay, the last thing that we have to do then is to get into our fuse box, put a spade clip on the end of this wire, and plug it into an ignition source. After that, we just take this inline fuse kit that Zex supplies with it. After the fuse, we go right to a master on and off. When we flick the switch on, it sends power to our 12 volt source right outside the firewall. It goes to our micro switch on the side of the carburetor. That means that the next time you floor it, solenoids turn on and you got an extra 250 horsepower if you want. It's going to be awesome. Learn more about this nitrous install on our website, VATVshow.com.